everyone welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more so today's topic is health education so this will be covered under two parts the first part includes the approaches of health education principles of health education and types of communication and its barriers and the second part is uh, methods of health education individual group and mass methods and differences between health education and propaganda so let's see what is health education okay so health education is a process of imparting information okay so what definition we are supposed to learn is this definition given by a national conference on preventive medicine in usa it is a process that informs motivates and helps people to adopt and maintain healthy practices and lifestyles which advocates environmental changes as needed to facilitate this goal and conducts professional training and research to the same end <laughs> a bit of lengthy definition but uh, the gist of this definition is not just uh, informing a people but rather motivating and helps people to adopt and maintain a healthy practices and lifestyle which we are trying to educate them by our knowledge so health education is a process of imparting information okay, it is an active learning process which aims at changing attitude of a people so the changing attitude is a very difficult task it takes very long time but health education can do wonders by changing attitudes and behavioral pattern of a person so it is a vital process uh, of prevention and it is how we reach out to people and alerting them by the doctor services and to all other community health resources so a health educated person is well aware of his own responsibility and of the steps he himself must take to receive the full benefits of prevention at all level so we have seen this definition so what are the objectives of health education so we are talking about educating people about health so it is the first objective is to inform the people then motivate and finally guiding into action so we have to inform the people about different diseases etiology and we should motivate it because they won't accept uh, how we say because they have so many barriers so we need to motivate the persons by clarifying uh, or their forming attitudes, beliefs, values, and opinion. So motivation, uh, without motivation, there is no point. So motivation is a combination of forces which initiate, direct, and sustain a behavior. So we are telling a people uh, to brush wisely. Okay, they, they heard it, that they know that it's good for oral health but to adopt that practice into their lifestyle it is very difficult so we need to motivate and ultimately which leads to action so guiding into action is the ultimate objective of this health education so what are the approaches to health education how we can provide health education and how we can provide a better health for people the first approach is legal or regulatory approach it is by law we are saying people that if you don't follow this law you will be punished so that is the first approach legal or regulatory approach it is use of law to protect the health of people just like epidemic disease act pollution act food adulteration act and environment act so epidemic disease act it is recently we have seen in case of covid 19 people who violate the basic norms of social distancing they can be taken into custody based on this law so these laws are to uh, make them understand about health but it is a failed approach because whatever we try to uh, teach by laws or regulation people won't accept it so let's see what is the second approach that is service approach or administrative approach so this approach is intent to provide all the health facilities to the people with the hope that they will use it but the problem is we are providing everything to uh, people but they won't take it because it is based on the felt need they should feel it 
this is what I need otherwise they won't accept it if something we are giving without the knowledge of felt need and if it is based on the normative need it will be a failure so we know the classification of needs normative need and felt need normative need is what the society thinks that person wants but actually the felt need is what the person feels what he wants so if the project or if the plan is based on the felt need then only it will work out otherwise it won't work out so administrative or service approach is based on the normative need and it is also a failure because the government is providing so many toilets for people but they are not feeling to use it then there is no point they should feel it they should think that this is for the better health public defecation should be avoided and they should use toilets but unless and until they feel it there is no point so this is also a failure because it is based on the normative need not on the felt need of the people the third approach is educational approach this is a lasting approach but it takes very long time because it is very effective because it has motivation communication and decision making components but the problem is it takes a very lot of time this is what we see in movie theaters ads about tobacco we might feel it funny or people might take it as a funny thing but over a long period of time it slowly imbibe into people's mind and it leads to a change in behavior and primary healthcare approach is the last approach it involves the full participation and active involvement of the people starting from the planning stage till the delivery of health service so primary healthcare we have seen in uh, our healthcare delivery system where the entire community is involved in this uh, project uh, the uh, community people the healthcare people and all the people who are at stake so everybody is involved in this project so it will be a success so this is a community participation is the key principle of this primary healthcare approach so all sectoral should be uh, interrelated for to have a better outcome of this uh, approach so we have four approaches the first one was legal or regulatory approach, administrative or service approach, educational and primary healthcare approach. Now let's see the principles of health education. So what are the principles when we uh, give, a, when we educate a people, we should remember what principles we are supposed to keep. The first one is interest, sorry, the first one is credibility, second interest, participation, motivation, comprehension, reinforcement, learning by doing, known to unknown, setting an example, good human relations, feedback, community leaders, soil, seed, so on. So what is credibility? The information what we provide to people should be very credible, very reliable and it should be scientifically proven. So we should not provide any lies which should be based on scientific data okay, and should be compatible with local culture and goals. We cannot produce uh, any cultural problem by the data we are providing so always we should keep in mind that it should be compatible to the cultural and local needs the second one is interest when we give information to a group of uh, not interested people there is no point so always we should create interest in people then only we should provide information otherwise they won't accept it so it should be based on the felt need if they don't feel it like to accept the information there is no point giving any health education so the interest should be created in the audience so participation is a key part of a group of people uh, accept or they take up the messages if it is in a lecture if it is a one-way lecture if the teacher says so many things and the students listens passively they won't take up any points. There should be active participation from the audience or from the students. Then only the group will be very active and they take up the messages what the person is giving, just like group discussion, panel discussion. So active participation of the people should, people is important. And the next principle is motivation. So we have seen what is motivation. Motivation is nothing but the fundamental desire for learning. In an individual so we need to keep motivate the people for accepting that particular pattern 
we need to motivate to brush twice a day so once they learn they find it okay it is good for health but we need to motivate the people to accept it so for a teenager aesthetics might be a motive to take care of his teeth whereas adult expense of undergoing restorative care so we need to think about the people what could be the motive of that particular age group so the next one is comprehension it is nothing but the level of understanding so when we are going to a group of people we should understand the level of education of that group of people if the group is of some primary education and we are providing some scientific data with some postgraduate level or with some uh, big hi-fi things they won't understand anything we should uh, go down to their level and uh, communicate in a way that they can easily relate so we should always understand how much they understood and what language they can easily accept the knowledge so always it is important because we might know everything about the topic about which we are going to talk but uh, we should understand in what language or what way it is easy to communicate so we should understand the level of comprehension so words which are strange or new to the people should not be used and we should never use technical terms or medical terms which will keep uh, a disinterest which will provide disinterest to the person who is taking class or educating so just an example eat food items that are karyogenic may not be comprehensible to many of people but better way to explaining would be avoid food stuffs which are sweet and which is sticky to your teeth like toffees and pastries so such such alteration of the sentence would be always better for to understand so the next one is reinforcement this is a principle that refers to repetition so we need to reinforce the thing which we are saying if i say once they'll just listen it if i say twice or thrice they might take up to their brain they might think that way okay this is what the person is saying so repetition is always a good idea it's like booster dose in health education next is learning by doing it is a principle in chinese if i hear i forget if i see i remember if i do i know so if you educate people to brush their teeth by providing a cast and brush and asking the person to uh, brush uh, in that cast and model he will learn it he will easily grasp the idea rather than just telling him some special method modified bass technique or any other techniques so always we always we uh, teach the patient by asking him to participate so learning by doing is always good and known to unknown so we should start from what the person known and to a level of what the person unknown so before starting of any health education program the health education should find out how much people already know and then we need to go for an unknown things like health education program with the aim of introducing toothbrush to a rural population so first we ask what are you using to clean your tooth at present okay then we have to go for why are you using it if they are saying we are using fingers or uh, mango leaves then we should teach about health toothbrushes if they already brushing with uh, toothbrushes then we can go for a higher level setting an example always the leader or the people who are teaching should themselves act an example just like a health educator who participate in program highlighting ill effects of tobacco should not be seen smoking since it sends a wrong signal and seriousness of the situation is lost so always the teacher should be an example or a health educator should be an example then should good human relations so always uh, the health educator should have a kind and sympathetic attitude towards the people and should always be helpful in them in clarifying doubts and repeating what is not understood so without a good rapport no message will be transported from the sender to receiver so feedback is always we should take feedback from the audience to make the program better in next time or at the same time because feedback is a key of uh, improving our programs or health education so community leaders always we should use community leaders to reach out the people because we are going to a village to teach about some 
uh, cancer cervical cancer among women so women might not be accept us because we are strangers so first we should use community leaders and we teach community leaders and ask them to communicate with the women because these community leaders are not person for the women so they might or they will definitely accept the person and whatever he says so always we should use community leaders soil seed sower soil is the community where we are providing the information seed is the information and sower is a health educator okay so health educator in the form of seed is uh, giving seed into the soil where it will uh, flourish later time so sower is a person giving information seed is the information itself and soil is the community or the people who receives health education now we move on to the communication when communication means a two persons are interacting each other it is a two-way process of exchanging or shaping ideas feelings and information to bring about desired changes in human behavior so definition is uh, very lengthy you can just by have this first line a key strategy to inform the public about health concern and to maintain important health issues on the public agenda so communication is nothing but the transfer of ideas, messages or information from one person to another. In this process, a cycle of communicating messages is formed between sender and the receiver. There should be a good rapport, then only this channel work out. The sender is required to conceive the message he wishes to send, encode this and transmit and receiver should receive this message, decode and clarify. So what are the components of communication center a person who starts the message is originator his objective should be clear you should know the interest of the audience you should know the message in very detail you should know the channels of communication and his abilities and limitation the receiver is the audience or the students or the people who receive this message there will be two types of audience that is one is controlled and uncontrolled control is just like a classroom where students are seated for a common interest they are homogeneous group they are very much organized group but uncontrolled is like a public place where it is not controllable so they have no common interest they are gathered just like that maybe because of curiosity the message is what we are trying to communicate based on the felt need that is important it should be clear and understandable specific and accurate and also timely and adequate it should be very interesting so channels of communication we can use the media chosen it should be efficient attractive and easily understandable the most common channel of communication is interpersonal or face-to-face -face communication and the feedback so types of communication one-way and two-way communication verbal and non-verbal formal and informal communication one-way communication is just like a teacher taking class with a passive audience knowledge is imposed here learning is authoritative because there is no participation and there is no feedback just like this whereas two-way communication is just like a, a discussion where the participation from both center and receiver learning is active and it is democratic rather than authoritative and it is more likely influencing a behavior so it is just like a counseling session so verbal and non-verbal communication verbal is traditional way by word of mouth non-verbal is uh, expression or our body language the positive body language or negative body language what we are giving giving out to our audience so formal and informal communication formal is how we present in a very organized group or a very uh, group of people where they are uh, waiting for a message an informal communication is just like how we communicate with our friends or colleagues. So we have many barriers in communication. They are psychological, physiological, environmental and cultural barriers. Psychological means that we have emotional disturbances, depression, neurosis and special methods and at most care should be adopted to convey the message in this group of people. Physiological barriers are difficulties in self-expression hearing and seeing understanding where we need to 
think about channels of communications environmental barriers where there is excessive noise and difficulties in vision and congestion can be overcome by making small groups and using appropriate channels for communication cultural barriers like some uh, religious group might not accept a certain health education or certain facts of uh, health so such uh, patterns of behavior habits beliefs and customs should be uh, specially addressed so that's the uh, part one we are finishing the part one of health education we have seen the approaches the definition principles and the communication and its barriers the next part we will be dealing about uh, the methods of health education individual group and mass approach and health education versus propaganda so thank you